Hey, hey, all you zombies, and welcome back to the Cube Crowd Creative Flat World. I've returned where I created slanted toruses in a previous video. The slanted toruses was created by warping the world edit generate space, and that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to warp the space to produce some other sorts of items other than slanted toruses. So let's go and give a twist to things, shall we? Well, I've jumped over to another part of the creative flat world, one that has no builds around me, so we're not going to get disturbed by anything in the background. And we're going to do our work here. So we're just going to first create a seed point. So we say up, zero. That will create us a block underneath us. We're still actually flying, so if I move forward here, you see here well, I'm still flying, but we've got a seed point from which to work. So let's get our iron blocks. I like using iron. Here we go. We'll just do that. Bonk, 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 bonk. Bonk, and bonk. And there we have our seed point. I'm going to select that. One, two. There we go. And that means we've now selected the two cube area. And I like using two cubes as a seed point because that means we're working in even numbers. If I just selected the one block, it would be, of course, odd numbers. But Let's start with that. We'll outset that to give us a bit of space. So we outset it by nine. There we go. We've outset it by nine. And that will give us a point which goes from here one, nine more. So we have in each direction making a 20 by 20 cube. So if we go size, we have a 20 by 20 cube. So 20, 20, 20. This gives us a working area for the generate command. Now, if we do a classical generate command, so if we go G and then we go 95, just 95 there, 95 is glass. And then glass is useful because it doesn't generate lighting updates. So it won't generate lag on the server as we're doing things. And then we'll give the normal formula for a sphere. X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared is less than one. So that's every block in our area which is less than one. And that's using normalized coordinates. It goes from minus one through to plus one in all three directions. So that's normalized coordinates, that's a sphere, and it's solid glass. Our sphere, our seed in the middle here was replaced by glass, so it's disappeared. Let's just undo that. And I generally don't like to work with uh, solid objects, it's better to actually work with our hollow objects because that gives you a bit more freedom to do things. So we use a minus H command which will hollow out any block which is either attached to an edge of the region or surrounded by all other blocks. So if we do that, we end up with a hollow sphere. It's still a one unit sphere filling our selected region. Undo that. I don't usually use normalized coordinates going from minus one to plus one. I much prefer to use block coordinates. And to use block coordinates, we do something else. We go a minus C option. The C option is very special in that it means center, but what it really does is change everything to be block coordinates. So instead of one being the boundaries, we would go eight. And we go eight to the power of two. So that will be the radius of the sphere. So this will give us an eight radius sphere or 16 diameter sphere. And there we have a 16 diameter sphere around our block coordinates. Now, the beauty of world edit is that you are not restricted to integers. You can actually do a little bit more. You can actually say 8.3, for example. And that gives us a slightly bigger sphere still not quite good. We're still getting these two blocks here. Let's actually go a little bit more. Let's just try it with an 8.5. There we go. That's a better sphere. We've got a little bit of a, a funny thing here, but that was just from my not undoing it before. And redo that. There we go. So that's a 8.5 sphere. Not a bad sphere, and that's actually a pretty good one to actually use 
if you're wanting a 16 diameter sphere. Now, undo that. We need a bigger area to work with than just a 20 by 20 area, so let's outset this a little bit more. So we outset by 20, which should give us a 60 diameter, uh, 60 sided cube. So size, here we go. We see now our area is now a 60 sided cube. Now that we have a slightly bigger area, let's actually use a different sphere. Let's see, sphere, sphere, a different sphere, which is slightly bigger, 15.3. We used this particular sphere in the previous video. It's a pretty good sphere. Oh, that was pretty close. Here we go. Okay, it's a pretty good sphere. No two indents. But that's not warping space. That's just a sphere. Let's actually raise this up. Let's actually move it upward. Now, y minus equal 15. Semicolon. Now, what is happening is that we have blocks being generated by the generate command. It's taking a block, x, y, and z coordinates, and feeding it in to this expression. This then moves that block down 15 points. So y, the y value is, has 15 points subtracted from it. That means this point up here gets moved down 15, and then it's checked to see if it's within the sphere area. The result is these points up here become into the sphere area. These ones down here do not. So the sphere gets sort of moved upward. So if we do that, well, it helps to actually undo it before. So let's see, undo, undo, and repeat. There we go. So the sphere has now moved up 15. And as it's a 15 diameter sphere, it's actually now sitting on our seed point. So this here is a sphere that's been moved upward. That's essentially what space warping did. So let us undo that, undo, and bring up a torus. Here we go, we have a torus equation, 20 major diameter, six minor, so it'll be out 20, and then a six diameter torus in a ring around our seed point. And there we have it. Let's repeat this with the slanted torus that we created in the previous video. So here is the slanted torus. We're doing this in red and we're rotating it twice to generate a slanted torus. It's the same torus, just slanted in two directions. Now, what is happening is a point here is being mapped by the generate command and rotated. So this point first gets rotated round and then gets rotated down into that plane. And because this point mapped into this area, then of course it gets set. So essentially it's warping space through rotate commands. The rotate XZ modifies the XZ variables by 0.4 radians. This is in radians. We'll come back to that in a moment. That is what we were doing last time to create slanted toruses. But you can do a lot more than just moving objects up and around or rotating them. Let's get on with things and just undo both of those. Let's go back to a little basics. We'll bring up our equation and just clean it out. So we're doing glass again, but this time we're going to set glass to anything that's less than y equals zero or y less than zero. So this generates a plane. Everything below y zero, he was trying to turn on, and of course the hollow command to remove the blocks underneath it, generating a flat plane. We can move this up by pushing space, well, we can push space up to make the plane move down. So we go 10, semicolon, and do it. And there's our plane pushed down. But that's still pretty boring. It's still just a plane. So let us undo both of those and repeat it with a little bit more fanciness. So we can add 
new variables. We can create a variable say r is equal to the square root of x to the power of 2 plus z to the power of 2. Semicolon. And then we can make the value of y, how much we push it down by, dependent on r or the radius. So we're generating how far horizontally out from our seed point this is. So r is how far the block is away from our seed point. And then we're pushing it down. So we go down here and then we're pushing it down by that distance r. So we're pushing it down to there. So at this point it gets pushed down. And if we do that, we get a cone. So let us undo that. And make it a little bit more interesting. Let's actually, rather than, there we go, rather than do it by this radius, just pushing it down dependent on the radius, let's make it the radius squared. And that's easy to do because we've got a square root here. We'll just remove the square root and we've got the radius squared. So the radius squared is equal to x to the power 2 plus z to the power 2. Now that's got a much bigger value, so we're going to have to divide it by a bit more. So we're going to make it the radius squared, radius squared, divided by 100. And if that's less than y zero, make it a draw the draw the block. So let's do that. And this generates an arc or a parabola hill, but it doesn't have to be a plane. We can make it something else. Let's actually take our equation and put in a cylinder. So this here is y to the power of 2 plus z to the power of 2 is less than 8 squared or 8 to the power of 2. So 8 is a radius and this will be a horizontal cylinder in the x direction. So here we have a horizontal cylinder going to the limits of our selection box in the x direction. Let's try arcing that using the formula we had before but limiting it to just the x direction. So we're just going to arc the x direction. So r is equal to x to the power of 2 or r squared is equal to x to the power of 2 and we're then going to make it y is going to be Push down, so warp space upward equal r divided by 100, the cylinder. Oops, what have we got here? Oh yes, r squared. And let's just undo that, both of those, and repeat things so we can see what we're doing. And there we have an arced cylinder. Now it's not quite a arced cylinder because the cylinder is actually not a circle anymore. So when we look up here, we're actually seeing a bit of an oval shape. So it's not quite as thick. We can see this more if we arc it even further. So undo that. And instead of dividing by 100, let's make it less. Let's arc it a lot, 20. Now, can you imagine this thing as legs for a base. You could have the legs coming up to a central area where you have the base. You can even add four legs and you could even add some rotates to the beginning of the expression over here to actually rotate them in odd angles as well. So can you imagine how useful this is? Well perhaps you just got some towers and you just want to have this thing arcing over the top between them. Let's just vertically warping space. Let's try something a little different. So let's undo that. And let's this time generate a vertical cylinder. So this time we've got the cylinder going from the XZ plane around at a radius of eight. So it's the same cylinder, just turned vertically. So here it is, turned vertically, our seed point in the center. That's a start. Now. Let's offset that by, say, 15 in the positive x direction. So we want to make it positive direction, move it in the positive direction. So we have to warp the space in the negative direction. So we warp it by 15 
offset. Now I'm sure to leave the old cylinders there just so you can see what's happening. So here we have a cylinder warped in the positive Z direction by warping space in the negative. Let's do something slightly different. We've warped it to the one side. Let's add a rotate this time. So here we have a rotate X Z direction and this is 0.4 so let's just do that and you see here it's rotated it a bit now it's 0.4 because it's in radians if you really want to do this in degrees rather than radians say you're wanting to make all these things rotated round in an odd way you can do it in degrees by actually changing the radians to things so to degrees so 60 degrees and the formula for the conversion is 80 over pi. That's actually what radians actually is. So 60 degrees converted to radians. So if we do that, there's our cylinder at 60. So we've got 0, 60, and you can keep on going like that. You can make it now 120. And you can go around and make it go round in a circle to do that. So you can position things very precisely using this method. Let's just undo, I think it's about, let's see, one, two, three, four. Oh, we've got one more undo. Okay, one more undo. Here we go. Let's actually do something slightly different. Let's rotate it based on the height. So rather than rotating it round based on the just a constant value let's actually make it dependent on y so y divided by 30 now the box here i picked 30 because we want to go from up here down to the bottom and we want to rotate a full circle from the top to the bottom that means we need to rotate by pi now the y up here is negative, that's sorry, positive, that's negative. So this is going to be a total 2 pi radians rotation because we're going from a negative value to a positive value. So pi times y divided by 30, 30 is half the size of our selection area. That's very important. So let's actually do that. And here we have a spiral. Now it's a very flat warped spiral. It's spiraling round the point here. This, this circle here is actually mapping almost identically to the bottom one so they can actually map on top of each other but it's very flat. That's because these are still circles and the circles are being warped around. It's not particularly nice looking. It's flattened. So what we need to do is we need to adjust it. What we need to do is when we're looking down here we want to see not an oval, we're getting an oval here. It's flattened because we're looking at it at an angle. What we want to do is make this more circular. So let's actually undo that. And bring up our cylinder again. Offset cylinder. There we go, it's just offset by minus 15. So here's our cylinder. And what we want to do is instead of a circle cylinder we want an oval cylinder. we want to stretch it in that direction now this was x so that's z so we need to stretch that circle there now we can do it either before or after it doesn't quite matter in this place because they're not going to interfere with each other we just want to stretch it and we want to because we want to stretch it we have to use warp space by shrinking it so we're dividing the space by 1.5 so we're going to shrink it by 50%. So if we shrink, warp, squeeze space by 50%, our cylinder will get more oval. Okay. So when we're looking at it at an angle, this is actually more circular. It doesn't really look very circular here, but it will. So let's undo those two. And take our cylinder and add our warp again. So pi times y divided by 30. So that's our warp based on height. Now if we look at it 
you'll see here it actually does look more circular. It's a lot better and it works very well. We can see how well it works by actually repeating this exact same formula, but this time pushing it to the other side. So we go plus there for the X. So we're pushing it, instead of pushing it this way, we're now gonna push it that way. And let's change color. Let's actually make it black. 15 data value on the glass. Now that is a lovely double helix. Now, can you imagine putting those into your world, making your base based on the double helix here? You can even see a bit of a circle. We move around. You should be able to see that there's a bit of a better circle. It's still a little flattened. It still not needs a bit more, but it's pretty close. It's not too bad. Now, this double helix has been very carefully designed so that this oval will match that oval and the same with the black. That is, it goes a complete circle, 360 degrees or two pi radians, all the way from the top to the bottom. That means you can actually stack them up. Now we've already got them in a selection box, so we can just stack them up straight away. So stack one up. And there you see it joins up perfectly. Continuing round, can't see any did any pro little problems or anything else. It just joins up very nicely. We can do the same thing going down and we've got three uh, the double helix now doing three spirals around. Here we go. Down we go. Boom. Now imagine your base with that thing. Beautiful. But let's undo all that. First of all, we need to expand the area. So we're going to outset this another 20. So this time we've got a 100 by 100 cube that we're going to be working in. That's just to stop things from clipping. And we'll just grab ourselves a uh, vertical torus. So this is a torus, 22 major radius, 6 there in the Z plane. So it's going to be a vertical torus in black. There you go. Now we can take do the same thing we we're doing with the cylinders, but this time we can twist up the torus. So undo that, bring up the formula, and we can stick in a rotate in there. So here we have a rotate in the XZ based on the height, the same sort of rotate we were doing before. So, and there, our vertical torus is twisted pretty much beyond recognition. It's still thick here because it doesn't change the thickness here and here it's flattened so where it's spinning round like mad it's getting flattened but it makes a very interesting shape now undo that and this time let's angle our torus first so we'll grab I'll just grab the expression here there we go so this time we've got a single rotate in the vertical direction. So there we have our torus. It's just been rotated very slightly. Now we're going to twist it by sticking in our twisting rotate. Oh, let's undo both of those, redo that last command, and there we go. Not a lot of change, but it is slightly different the slightly off center here so we're getting a bit more flattening on there a bit of a funny bulge here but you can get the idea you can modify things very slightly let's undo that now if we take our torus 
and we offset it rather than rotate it. So here we've offset it in the Z direction by 10. So if we look at it, you see here it's actually offset. There's our center, but it's over here. So let's undo that. And again, add our rotation to the front. You always add the warping of the object at the front. Now this is really warped. You can see here it's sort of doubling back on itself. And essentially that's what's happening. It is doubling back on itself. So that is the essentials of space warping. You can play with it to your heart's content. You can keep at it. You can make all sorts of weird and wonderful shapes by just taking ordinary shapes and warping the space to put them into pretzels. So this is Ant and this is Ant's Minecraft. Bye.